All right, so yeah, the entire GTA timeline explains in script video. Dreyas. City, Liberty City, or Los Santos. The entire. Does every single GTA game connect with each other? And what's the big picture of the GTA franchise? Los Santos is my favorite with answers, uh, city out of, out of them all, in my Please opinion. Like and fasten your seat it, it, that's in my opinion. With guns, Shout out to Gameology! This is the complete Grand Theft Auto timeline explained. Okay. 2D universe, 1997 to 1999. Oh my god, look first at these graphics! First, let's clarify one thing. The Grand Theft Auto franchise is divided into three parallel universes with three separate timelines. The 2D universe where the first games took place, the 3D Wait, what? universe introduced in 2001 with GTA 3, and the HD universe started in 2008 with GTA 4 and is still going strong today. Let's start with the really? 2D universe. This is the OG timeline where the very first GTA, GTA London 1961 and 1969, and GTA 2 took place. GTA 2? Which is the very first open world dynamics that would later make the franchise successful with a large urban map, interactive universe, and the ability to wreak chaos. Wait, so they were in London, New York, the 2D worlds with a top down perspective. Miami and Los Angeles. Wow. Games called the OJ Cam. Our story begins in 1683, 314 years before Grand Theft Auto, first of its name, Wait. the foundation of Liberty City, which will serve as the what? point for many games. Two centuries later, in 1867, Uncle Fu, an important <laughs> character in Grand Theft Auto the first, is said to be born, making him the oldest <laughs> character of all the franchise. Flash <laughs> forward to 1961. 36 years before the first game in London, where the events from GTA London 1961 occur. The protagonist meets Harold Cartwright. Oh, Harold! Gang, then, under his orders, kills the greaser gang leader, Gene White. Later that year, the protagonist will work for the UK's government and ultimately destroy the Austrian terrorist, Hans Nemesis, activities in London. Oh, this wowzers. To Hans fleeing London. Later, in 1968, hippie students in the Sunrise District of San Andreas formed a commune in the West, leading to a conflict resolved by SWAT operatives. Decent Soviet boys of West End girls! ...creation of Soviet Hill, a San Andreas neighborhood. On September 27 of the year 1967, Samuel Diva, the main antagonist of the first game, was born. The year after, in 1969, the events from Grand Theft Auto London 1969 occur. With Bro, he's going back. To London after being sent to Vice City by the Crips twins. This ultimately led to Harold Cartwright and Hans Nemesis's death. Two years later, in 1971, uh -oh. Speed, the protagonist of Grand Theft Auto 2, was born. In the early 90s, a lot of the oh, run, run, I'm out. Yeah, run. Keep running, run. Including Samuel Diva's countless investigations for misbehavior as a police officer, such as incest, kidnapping, or maliciously wounding a fellow officer. I'm or sorry, US what? President death by instant combustion. Later in 1997, events from the first GTA occur. The protagonist is a young criminal who starts working for the Vercotti crime family until a series of events involving heists, kidnappings, gang conflicts and casually surviving a train explosion makes him a police target and forces him to leave for San Andreas. Uh-oh. works for Uncle Fu's uh -oh. market, and later for El Burro in Vice City. Maybe you'll but put a shirt on. Samuel Diva, the dirtiest cop ever, blackmailed the protagonist to make him work for him, which leads to him murdering a bunch of people, including El Burro, before starting a war amongst the Rasta's gangs. But later, the Rasta's leader, Brother Joe, <laughs> convinced the protagonist to join them and be protected from Diva's influence. Together, they will end the Rasta's war and kill Samuel Diva. The story concludes with the protagonist possibly retiring after a series of criminal exploits. Brother, retiring? Years later, in 1999, in Anywhere City, the events from Grand Theft Auto 2 take place. We incarnate yep. the sociopath yep. Claude Speed. Claude! The sociopath is a mere euphemism for this guy. Who will play Claude! The gang leader in the city by working for them before betraying them. At the end of the game, Claude literally leaves a half-destroyed city with full pockets. For those who wonder why Anywhere City never appeared again, a good guess would certainly be that Claude Speed did so much damage that the city literally disappeared from the map. Trevor Phillips should be proud. Claude is basically his ancestor. This man this took off the whole map with a school threat. Known as the PlayStation 2 era and certainly the golden age of Grand Theft Auto. Yes, sir! We were blessed with one GTA game per year. Yeah, it happened. 
This period was marked with legendary games like GTA San Andreas and GTA Vice City, but also a massive improvement in the series' quality overall. Better graphics, larger maps with more realistic worlds, a larger choice of vehicles or weapons, and even new gameplay mechanics, such as the character... Bro, I can't believe we're going back to Vice City, though. That's crazy. Here, our entry point is the year 1798, 203 years before GTA 3, when Liberty City was founded. Flash forward to 1951, when an Italian-American named Tommy Versetti... TOMMY! Three years later, in 1954, Lance Vance was born. In 1971, aged 20, Tommy Versetti was betrayed by his boss, Sonny Forelli, which led to Tommy killing 11 men alone and serving 15 years in prison. The judge gave him 15 and life. In 78, Ricardo Diaz immigrated to the United States, and Ken Rosenberg started working for the Forelli family. In 1984, Ken Rosenberg started practicing law in Vice City. But mainly, Victor Vance was expelled from the army that same year, after being set up by his sergeant, Jerry Martinez. This is where Grand Theft Auto Vice City Stories debuts. Whoa, 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 whoa! Victor reluctantly starts working for arms dealer Phil Cassidy, before killing the latter's brother-in-law, Marty J. Williams, oh, and oh. taking over his business. The Vance crime family is later founded by Victor alongside his brother Lance Vic! and his girlfriend, Louise Cassidy Williams. The Lance brothers will later steal a big drug shipment belonging to the Mendez cartel, which will later lead to the cartel leader, Armando Mendez, to kill Luis before being murdered by Victor Vance. Oh no. Oh the Lance no. Will ultimately caused the Mendez cartel's destruction by later killing Jerry Martinez and Diego Mendez before leaving Vice City and moving to a farm in Panama and laying low for Bro, everybody years. just backstabbing Which each other. To 1986, when after being released from prison, Tommy Versetti moves to Vice City and takes charge of Tommy! the Pirelli family and the Vance brothers. But Ricardo Diaz's men ambushes them, leading to Victor Vance's death. Oh! 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 Tommy starts working for Ricardo Diaz and ends up acquiring many businesses across the town. Later, alongside his new BFF, Lance Vance, he kills Diaz and slowly becomes the boss of Vice City. Uh -oh. But his success isn't hidden from the Pirelli eyes, and Sonny comes in person to ask his due. As a real G, Tommy tries to frame him with a real money, G. But a greedy and jealous Lance betrays him, leading to his near death at the Forelli's hands. After killing his former BFF and his former boss, Tommy realizes every G's dream and goes on living a long life filled with money and power. But one year later, in 1987, Brian Johnson, a young member of the Grove Street families, dies in San Andreas, Ooh. which leads to his brother Carl CJ Johnson to the city. In the aftermath of Brian's death and Carl's departure, the Grove Street's family starts losing many territories to their rival gang, the Ballers. The ba no, 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 the, the Ballers. It's not the Ballers, it's the Ballers. The <laughs> Johnson, CJ's mother, was killed in a drive-by shooting in Grove Street. Oh, yeah. This makes CJ return to Los Santos, thus starting the events of His Excellence, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Shortly after his arrival, CJ is once again involved in criminal <laughs> Bro got robbed two minutes into the city. ...officers like the dirty Frank Tenpenny and taking arms for the Grove Street's families again alongside his most trusted friends, Big Smoke and Ryder, with the intent oh of taking God, revenge you traitor. his mother's death. On his path, he'll eventually meet Ken Rosenberg or Ken Paul, two former associates of Tommy Versetti, work with Salvatore Leone, the leader of the Leone crime family, but also date a Mexican girl named Catalina, who will dump him and leave to Liberty City with a silent man named Claude. Great. But more importantly, after literally causing the gangster apocalypse across numerous cities, including San Fierro, Las Venturas, and of course Los Santos, among others, CJ ultimately finds that all this time, Ryder and Big Smoke, his homies, traitors, and cheese, had been plotting the Grove Street family's demise with the ballers, traitors, and snitches since the very beginning. Wait, what? And they tried to kill Sweet in a drive-by shooting and disguised it in a baller's attack. What? But they missed and killed CJ's mum instead. Jesus. Wait, I didn't even know that. Wait, hell? what? This leads CJ to one of the most badass revenge arcs of all time. In a series of events, uh -oh. he will reclaim Grove Streets, kill Ryder, kill Big Smoke, and end up as the new boss of Grove Streets with a lot of businesses and a bright future. Yeah. Two years later, in 1994, an Italian-American gangster named Tony Cipriani... Tony! ...for four years after killing a notorious figure from one of the main mafias in town. Three years later, in 1997, the Triads, a terrible Chinese gang, started operating in Liberty City. 
The year after, this is Chinatown? Tony Cipriani returns to Liberty City and thus begins Grand Theft Auto, Liberty City Stories. Oh, never mind. Tony tries to prove himself to the Leone family by undertaking various tasks under Salvatore Leone's order. After being betrayed by Vincenzo Silly, Salvatore is arrested. To help him out, Tony faces the Sicilian Mafia and takes down enemies like Pauli Sindaco and Avery Carrington. Our Italian gangster also assists media mogul Donald Love in rebuilding Fort Staunton and disrupting Yakuza operations by killing Kazuki Kasen, whose death will cause his sister Asuka and his brother Kenji's arrival in Liberty City. After getting Salvatore out of prison, Tony adds in rescuing Maya O'Donovan from Sicilian underboss Massimo Torini. The story then concludes with Tony earning Salvatore's trust and respect after securing peace with the Sicilian Mafia. Oh, nice! Getting the Leone family at the top of Liberty City's Mafias. Nice! Three years later, in 2001, Tony reached the rank of capo in the Leone family. In October that same year, a silent man named Claude is executing a bank robbery with Catalina, his girlfriend for the past nine years. His ride and die, the Bonnie to his Clyde. But she betrays him and <laughs> shoots him out of the blue before leaving him for dead. Say Crazy. She's an ambitious girl. And Claude, just small time. Women, right? But Claude <laughs> escapes from prison with another thug named Eight Ball. Thug. He ends up working for Tony Cipriani. But Claude, who seeks revenge for Catalina's betrayal, is not here for loyalty. And ends up killing Salvatore Leone on a instructions before leaving with his wife Maria. Later on, Catalina's trail leads Claude to direct confrontations with the Colombian cartel, led by his ex and responsible for Asuka's brother Kenji's death. Little did Asuka know that Claude, just like Tommy Vassetti and Tony Cipriani in the past, once worked with the billionaire Donald Love, who asked him, disguised as a cartel member, to kill Kenji. Wait, what? But as the war between the Yakuza and the cartel intensifies, leading to many casualties, Catalina takes advantage of Claude's absence to kill Asuka and kidnap Maria. On his way to save his new girlfriend, Claude accepts to pay the ransom, but is once again fooled by Catalina, who gives her men the order to kill him before trying to escape in a helicopter. Why are you trusting this girl, in bro? Badass mode kills everyone and destroys the vehicle, killing Catalina in the process and rescuing Maria. Nice! The is left ambiguous as a gunshot is heard when the screen fades to black. The HD Universe, 2008 uh -oh. to current day. Uh -oh. We reset our calendar one last time uh -oh. in the HD Universe. The current and longest timeline in the Grand Theft Auto franchise. My timeline. Where a new world awaits with a whole new lore to explore. Nico! includes Grand Theft Auto 4, the unbeatable Grand Theft Auto 5, Grand Theft Auto Online, and maybe the upcoming Grand Theft Auto 6. This yes, sir! This period in the franchise history where the limits of an open world experience were pushed again and again. Bro, GTA 6 is gonna go crazy. Our story here begins in 1609, 404 years before GTA 5, when the English explorer Horatio Humboldt founded a colony named New Rotterdam. In 1664, New Rotterdam was renamed Liberty City. More than a century later, which is New York in real the life, city of Los Santos was founded in the southern region of San Andreas. In which is Los Angeles, in Serbia, Nico Bellic, our protagonist in GTA 4, and his cousin Florian Kravic were born in Yugoslavia. Five years later, in 1983, Luis Fernando Lopez, our protagonist in GTA 4 Ballad of Gay Tony, was born. In 1988, in South Los Santos, Franklin Clinton was born. Franklin! The same year, a certain Michael Townley committed his first bank robbery. Four what? Years later, in 1992, the Bosnian War started, and Nico Bellic debuted his military career by fighting for the Serbian side. Oh! And six years later, in 1998, during the Yugoslav War, he was almost killed with his unit, the 15-man squad, consisting of members of his village. Only three members survived. Later that year, he left the army and started working for a Russian criminal, Ray Bulgarin. Fast forward to 2004 in Ludendorff in the US, where a party consisting of Michael Townley, Trevor Phillips, and Brad Snyder Bradley. robbing a bank. The robbery absolutely fails, leading to Brad's death. Michael faking his death and yep. moving to Los Santos under the name Michael DeSanta. The Santa. And Trevor escaping to live a fugitive lifestyle that will bring him to Blaine County near Los Santos. They did Trevor Dirty with this During one, I can't year, lie. Johnny Klebitz and the Lost Motorcycle Club took the road to Los Santos. One year later, in 2005, the nightclub owner, Anthony Gay Tony Prince, met Luis Fernando Lopez for the first time and hired him as a bodyguard. 
The pair will quickly grow into a father and son type of relationship. <laughs> Two years later, Nico Bellic cut his ties with Ray Bulgarin after the latter tried to kill him for a failed operation. Shortly after this, the cook stole diamonds from Ray, and at the same moment, Gay Tony was struggling to keep his clubs open and started borrowing from various loan sharks. Uh oh. Which leads to 2008, with the events from Grand Theft Auto 4, The Lost and Damned, and The Ballad of Gay Tony all taking place at the same time in Liberty City. Wait, really? Nico Bellic arrives in America and starts working for the Russian Mafia. Yes, various sir. various criminal organizations. At the same time, Billy Gray, the president of the Lost MC, gets out of rehab but gets arrested later, making Johnny Oh, my, look at these the frames. Presence. And Luis Lopez starts working for the Ancelotti family, to whom Tony is hugely indebted. Later on, Gay Tony and his boyfriend, Evan Moss, decide to buy <laughs> two millions worth of diamonds for resale. You've guessed it, those are the same diamonds that the cook stole from Ray Bulgarin, but the Lost MC, led by Ray Bocino, an Italian mobster, seized the opportunity to steal them. Later, Ray Bocino sent Nico and Johnny to sell the diamonds to the Jewish mob, but Louise intervened and managed to steal the diamonds back and leave, while Johnny kept Ray Bocino's money in the chaos. Wait, this will cause what? Ray to send Nico to kill Johnny's best friend, Jim Fitzgerald. Shortly after this loss, Johnny and the remaining members of the Lost MC will lead an assault on the Alderney State Correctional Facility and kill Billy, who was planning to sell them out. They leave Liberty City after this, which concludes The Lost and Damned. In the meantime, Ray Bulgarin arrives in Liberty and City wait. to kill Nico himself, and Louise starts working for him. But soon enough, the Russian mobster learns his diamonds are in the hands of Gay Tony and Louise, and decides to betray them, and tries to kill Louise. Oh, wow. At the same moment, Nico kidnaps Gracie and Celotti. Yep. This forces Tony and Louise, who are indebted to the Ancelotti crime family, to hand over the diamonds in exchange for her Give me the diamonds! Ray Bulgarin sees this as a perfect opportunity to retrieve his diamonds, and get rid of Nico and Louise at the same time. This leads to a shootout in the aftermath, Greedy which idiot. Nico is killed by Nico. After this, the end of GTA 4 unfolds, and Nico's fate depends on the player's choice. Yep. If Nico decides to take revenge and kills his archenemy, Dmitry Raskolov, his death leads to the Pagorino family's downfall, since Raskolov was their main supplier. In retaliation for that, an assassination attempt occurs during Nico's cousin, Roman's wedding, and actually Rome. results in Kate's, Nico's love interest's death. Yep. This will result in Nico killing Jimmy Pegorino to avenge his lover's death, yep. earning a quarter million dollars in the process. Punk. On the other hand, if Nico decides to make a deal with Raskolov instead of killing him, he still earns a quarter of a million dollars. Nobody dies and everybody lives happily ever after. Of course not. Raskolov, being the rat he is, still yep. betrays Nico and tries to murder him at Roman's wedding, but accidentally kills Roman instead. Honestly, at this point, I wouldn't be surprised Crazy. if this part of the game was written. Yeah, the girl had to die. Roads. His wife had to die. Bloodshed at weddings. Nonetheless, Nico goes to find Raskolov to kill him this time. After Raskolov's death, Nico promises to Roman's wife that her son will never miss anything and is comforted by Kate, who mourns with him, as she should, since it could have literally been her at his place. Shortly after GTA 4's ending, Luis and Tony are still in big trouble. Despite saving Gracie, Ray Bulgarin and the Ancelotti family are still after them. This causes Rocco Pelosi, a debt collector from the Ancelotti uh -oh. family, to make a simple offer to Louise. Kill Tony or die. Louise obviously refuses and it's officially time to settle their debt in Grand Theft Auto fashion. Louise then goes to destroy Ray Bulgarin's heroin supply and takes down his crime syndicate right before killing him. In the aftermath of these events, Louise leaves Liberty City in fear of Ancelotti's wrath. Five years after those events, we travel to Los Santos for the events of GTA 5. My GTA era! Online. In the first half of 2013, the earliest events from GTA Online took place. From the protagonist's arrival in Los Santos to the first heists, all the way through to the Lowriders update. The Lowriders! The GTA 5 occurred, the biggest success of the Grand Theft Auto franchise, and a solid take in the greatest game of all time debate. Franklin yes, steals a car it's a true. In Los Santos and finds himself driving with a gun to his head. Uh -oh. This is his first encounter with Michael DeSanta, a retired bank robber formerly known as Michael Townley. Michael Townley. Seeking new opportunities and Michael getting involved. I like how they met, by the way. <laughs> the duo robbed the Vangelico jewelry store with the help of Lester. Oh, uh, my favorite heist out of the whole out of the whole thing. My favorite heist. Attracts Trevor's attention. I don't care. Who, after casually smashing Johnny Klebitz's skull and killing other members of the Lost MC, he killed the whole gang. Santos to find Michael alive and well after believing him dead for nine years. 
This leads to the birth of one of the most iconic trios in gaming history. Yes, sir. The band gets involved in a series of complex heists orchestrated mainly by corrupt FIB agent Steve Haynes. Ha, I hate there, Steve David Haynes. I, David Weston's, oh, I hate him too. Protagonists ...who initially had nothing but hatred, manipulation, or despise for each other gradually become close and some sort of bizarre and untold friendship appears between them. So, but at the end of the game, as they manage to pull off the biggest heist in Los Santos history by robbing the Union The cannon is back, deathless, right? Earning a $201 million loot, Franklin is approached by Steve Haynes and Devin Weston and offered to kill either Michael or Trevor, as one of them must go. This leads to three different choices, A, B, and C, each with a different outcome for the protagonists. If you are among the sons of Satan who picked the choices A or B, which results in Franklin killing Michael alone, or Trevor getting killed by Franklin and Michael, please leave this video please. and get a priest to please. exercise your devil soul. You need Jesus. Out. In choice C, which is the canon ending of the game, yeah, the okay, it is the canon ending, okay. And kills Devin West it is the canon ending, okay, I knew it. And Wei Cheng. This allows them to finally get what they wanted from the beginning. Franklin finally has the money he needs to leave yep. the streets. Michael Get him off. Finally free Get him out. Past, and Trevor Get that idiot Trevor out. Has made friends. I guess that's something he wanted. Despite Michael, Trevor, and Franklin's adventures ending there, the HD Universe stories go on with GTA Online. The dedicated multiplayer <sighs> Grand Theft Auto game which takes place in a constantly evolving world where the player can create his own character and live his own story in the Grand Theft Auto lore. Long story short, GTA Online is by far the biggest installment in modern GTA history. Yeah, it is, man. To live Grand Theft Auto to its fullest. It's been really successful. I would admit, I would admit and that. that. folks, is everything you needed to know about Grand Theft Auto. Shout out to Gamma, uh, Gameology. Um, this is a, a, a really well, like, he went to the depths. He said, oh, this guy was born here. This guy was born there. Shout out to this guy for commentating and, and for giving us the entire lore on GTA um honestly bro i cannot wait to gta 6 that comes out next year let's pray that it comes out next year that i mean it, it was official that the release date is 2025 but we all know how things work out man you know some things get pushed back or whatever but i got faith i got pure faith that gta uh will come out next year man it's pro it's my most anticipated game um that's right now um obviously there's like a lot of games that i want and stuff like that but when it comes down to it, number one is like Grand Theft Auto 6. So we'll see, you know, how that is. Um, I got excited over the trailer. If you guys haven't already, uh, make sure you guys go watch my GTA 6 trailer uh, reaction that I did. It's literally the day that it came out, I reacted to it. Uh, well, the, the entire internet reacted to it. And uh, I'm really excited um, for GTA 6, man. Comment down below. What do you guys think about GTA 6? And comment down below. What is your favorite Grand Theft Auto game ever? So you guys have to come out and...